Have you ever wondered how to install adjustable push rods in your twin cam? Stay tuned in this next video, I'm going to show you how to do just that. So we're going to go through the basic procedure of installation of adjustable push rods in a twin cam. It's pretty much the same for uh, evolution back to 84. Um, depending uh, which push rods you use, the adjustment will be a little bit different. But stay tuned to the end of this video and I'll show you specifically how you can, uh, without knowing the actual thread pitch of the push rod, the adjustable push rod, uh, how you're able to, to tell how far you should adjust it. So uh, for this video, I'm going to be using the S&S Quickie Adjustable Push Rod Kit. It's fully adjustable. The rocker boxes can stay on. Um, you replace the, the stock push rod covers with the covers that come in the kit. Um, right now, what we want to do is find the, uh, the lowest point in the, in the lifter travel so that it's on the compression stroke of top dead center. I do that by putting my fingers into the tappets. I've got the spark plugs out the engine uh, of the engine, the transmission's in high gear so I can turn the motor over with the rear wheel. I'll begin turning it over. I can feel on my uh, one finger the exhaust tappet is raising and going back down. Now the intake is coming up and it's going back down. So I'll stop there. I'm gonna to go to the other side of the bike and I'm gonna check rear cylinder. I've got a screwdriver here. Just set it through the spark plug hole. I can feel the top of the piston and I'm gonna bump the rear wheel with my right hand. I can feel the piston coming up to top dead center. It's at top dead center now. That's at uh, TDC of the compression stroke. So we know that we've got Top dead center of the compression stroke. Both the tappets are at their lowest point. Now we can put the adjustable push rods in and set them without any fear of doing any damage. This kit does come with uh, very detailed instructions. I do recommend reading them. I've done it a number of times and I still do check out the instructions. The push rods themselves in this particular kit are all the same length. Some will come specifically for intake or exhaust, it'll be a little bit longer or shorter. You can check that just by setting them on a flat surface and comparing, and they are all the same length. So if you pick any one out of the kit, you wanna make sure you've got your O-ring in place at the bottom, in the tappet cover, the fatter O-ring, installed into the head. Take your push rod tube cover. Put your O-ring, new O-ring in there. Slide that together. Put the push rod through. The quickies are nice. They have a spot where it'll just slide in. Come a long way. So there's a spot where they just slide in and out and we'll put the top get the ball up in there and then let the push rod itself drop down start to thread it then you want to extend the push rod until you feel it touch the tap it Alright, so I've extended it, it's finger tight, the push rod's at its uh, free length, there's no up and down travel, it's basically zero lash, but we have no compression, no uh, preload on the tappet unit itself, and this is where the next part will come in, 
I'll get in a little closer, show you how I mark the push rod with a little paint pen before you extend it so you can count the number of turns of preload onto your hydraulic unit. And again, each push rod manufacturer uses a different specification depending on the number of threads per inch on their adjustable push rod, but I will show you a way that you can check that and make your adjustments without knowing the threads per inch so you get the proper preload on your hydraulic tappet. So we've got our push rod in there, it's at zero lash. There's no preload on the hydraulic. We're gonna set it up now. I use these bungee cords to keep stuff out of the way. Seem to be able to hook onto anything fairly well. Get our push rod cover up out of the way. You can see in there not too bad. You can see the lower nut. And I'm gonna use a yellow paint marker. I'm gonna put one on the lower part of the adjustable and right above it on the upper part of the adjustable so we can count our four full turns. The lower part uses a quarter, a quarter inch. The upper is seven sixteenths as well as the lock nut. And I'm gonna start extending it and we'll watch. We want four full turns. The yellow mark is coming around, so we've got one, one full turn. We want to get four full turns on this one. There's two. And three. And four full turns. I'm gonna run the lock nut back up against the top. We're gonna hold the bottom and the top. It's kind of difficult to see in this video, I'm sorry. When you go to do it, it'll make a little more sense. So we're holding the top and the bottom. We're gonna get this 7 sixteenths in here on the lock nut and we're gonna pull the lock nut against the top and snug everything up. You want to get that good and tight. You don't want it to back off. Now the lock nut is tightened against the top. The push rod's in there. It will not spin because you've got preload now on the hydraulic unit. The oil is actually trying to escape out of the hydraulic unit. Um, so you don't want to turn the motor over or do anything at this point. We're at top dead center of the compression stroke, so both of these tappets are at their lowest point. We are able to come over and do the exhaust tappet at the, as the next procedure. This, just do the same thing you did. we did for this one with this one, and then let it sit until we can actually spin these tappets with our fingers usually or a slight drag. You can see I can move it there, but I have to put the wrench on it. So I'm going to go ahead and put the next one in and then we'll check. Uh, this one will probably bleed down in that time. And then we can turn the engine over using the rear wheel like I showed you to put the, uh, to do the same procedure for the front cylinder. Put our larger diameter thin o-ring in the top of our fatter one up in the top get it in there nicely seated have a look up and see verify it's in place put your o-ring on your push rod tube Slide everything together, put your push rod in through, run it up into the top, and start extending the push rod until it contacts the tappet and you have a zero 
lash, zero up and down, no free play up and down, and it's just finger tight. And then we'll do the adjustment procedure again of the four full turns for this particular push rod set, the quickie adjustables from SNS, and there I've got it fully extended. It's nice and snug. What I'll do is thread that in there. Take our yellow paint marker, put a mark on the bottom one, right above on the top. Hopefully you can see that in the video. Quarter inch wrench holds the bottom stationary. And a 7 16 to extend the top, four full turns. There's one, see the yellow marks. There's two. Coming around three. And there's four full turns. This thing is causing some problems, of course. So we're at our four full turns. We'll run the lock nut up against the top part going to hold the bottom and a 7 16 on the top thing wants to be a pain in the ass sometimes they do require to be shortened but in this case I think we're okay. I got a 7 16 holding the top net. I've got the quarter inch here on the bottom. And we'll get in here for the lock nut. And with our left hand here, we're holding these two from moving and we're pulling the lock nut tight against the top so that nothing will come loose we can go and check and see the back intake push rod if it's bled down yet the hydraulic unit itself to see if it's bled down I'll put the wrench in there and just move it a little bit I can feel there isn't as much pressure against it anymore, not as much as there is against this one. So the hydraulic unit is bleeding down and I expect, you know, as usual, that this exhaust one will bleed down as well. The push rods will become loose and then we can turn the engine over without any fear of damaging the valves coming in contact with the piston, particularly because they're actually off their seat until the hydraulic unit bleeds down. And once it's bled down, uh, we'll turn it over and do the same procedure for the front cylinder. And then when you start the engine, the hydraulic units pump up to their uh, to take out any excessive lash. What makes it for a quieter running uh, operation. Uh, just do a little close-up video here. You can see I've got the push rod tube cover up, and I can actually rotate. The push rod itself just uh, with my fingers here so we know that the hydraulic unit for that particular push rod has bled down we're waiting for this one to do the same I can't turn it over with my fingers yet 
but it will bleed down and that's when we can turn the engine over. So one way you can check without really knowing the threads per inch and figure out how many turns you need is to actually know that the hydraulic tappet unit for Harley on the Evolution as well as the twin cam is about 200 thou point two zero zero of an inch so knowing that 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 here is the actual tra travel from top to bottom of the hydraulic unit we want to compress from zero lash when we extend the push rod about midway, so a hundred thou point one zero zero of an inch. So I'll set my vernier, we'll lock it down there, and then we're just going to set it back here for a little bit of reference, and I'm going to hold the end. And turn the other. I've got yellow paint markers on there, and we're going to go one and two, three and four, four full turns. And I'm going to put the end in here, and from where the nut was. To where this new position is, we are at just over a hundred thou. It's a little bit of wiggle room. The net wasn't tight. So we'll go back in one, two, three, and four. I can tighten the nut right up. Then count it out again. Oops. And we'll count it out again. One, two, three, and four. So that's a hundred thou. I can turn it in one, which is three. Check it again, and it's tight. So SNS on this particular kit does recommend four. I do know that it's four. We're at three, four. It's a hundred thou, so it's preloaded. The hydraulic tappet unit. And they're going about 120. So it's about 20 thou past the center point. And usually it's a half turn plus or minus. They're recommending the four. But if you have a push rod and you're not sure, here's how you check it. You just wind it in to call it your zero point. Put a mark on the two pieces there. Your nut will stay stationary. You begin to wind it and wind it and take a measurement in that space. And if it's around 100 thou point one zero zero, you know that you've preloaded the hydraulic unit that's one way of being able to, to use any push rod, adjustable push rod, and not really know what the manufacturer recommends. We're just knowing that the hydraulic unit will end up in the middle of its range. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing on the front, but I'm waiting for the push rods to bleed down, and that's how I do uh, adjustable push rod installation. If you have any questions or concerns, just drop me a... A comment down below send me an email or a direct message and uh, just just let me know what what it is you'd like to know and I can answer your question this is Jeff Palmer the Cracker Jack mechanic and I bring you videos uh, about motorcycle mechanics if uh, there's anything you'd like to see just let me know thanks for watching if you like this video and found it helpful click the subscribe button below helps me out and I'll continue to bring more videos